Texas General Laws, Chapter 30A, uh, paragraphs 18 through 25, as amended by Chapter 28 of the Acts of 2009, the Wetlands Protection Act, and to the Wellfleet Environmental Protection Bylaw, July 1986, and its regulations of January 2000, the Wellfleet Conservation Commission will hold public hearings on Wednesday, December 15, 2021, at 5 p.m., with a business meeting starting at 4 p.m. via remote meeting pursuant to the Ga Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's orders imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted at this meeting. Town hall is closed to the public. Board members will participate in this meeting remotely. And currently, oops, this made everything disappear. Currently, we have Marty Murphy, Barbara Bresnell, Michael Fisher, and myself. So we have a quorum, and I see that Hillary is here. She may be just on the phone. Let's see here. We had a we had an email message about something we wanted to discuss during the business meeting. Does anybody remember? Hi there, Hillary. Hi, how Hi, are Hillary. you? We almost had to call a tow truck this morning. I heard, I heard. Audrey and I are not having really good driving luck. Um, all the more reason we need an electric car or something smaller so we can just push it when the going gets tough. Yeah, I um, think a golf, a golf cart would be good. I think. Yeah, but Marty was great cart, getting us out. Maybe yeah, a motorized it. mountain bike might be best. <laughs> a sidecar for y'all, I don't know. As I said before, Michael, I'm used to driving in snow, so it was not a big deal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sand is just. I don't think I would have helped snow. out much if I were there, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> we got totally sideways on the road and said, now what? <laughs> <laughs> can go forward, can go back. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, didn't, uh, Hillary, didn't you? Uh, send an email with something you wanted to discuss during the business? Yeah, um, I think, well, we have Theodore Castro Santos here, and he and I had exchanged some email. He wants to talk about vessels on the beach, um, and I see that it's here. Richard, I'm not sure why you're here. I'm, am I missing something? You're on mute. I'm, I'm just interested, that's all. Okay. Okay, so Richard's just listening, um, but Theodore's here. If if we want to hear from him on his matter, we yes, could start let's there. do that. Theodore, <laughs> yeah, hi folks. I, I pardon me. I just I just got off a six hour drive. Just got into my hotel room, so I'm. <laughs> I appreciate the heads up. The timing has worked up. Hi, Barbara. Long time no see. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway. I, I had sent a rather lengthy email to the Marina Advisory Board, um, you know, calling out several recent uh, development changes, you know, existing policies are being implemented and so forth. I'm assuming the one I'm here to talk about is the, um, the move to shift the tenders from where we traditionally held them uh, up to the rack line. Yes. Uh, Nobody ever actually talked to me about this at all. My brother was there. We share a dinghy in our family among three families. Um, and we all use the same, the same one. And, um, you know, I've kind of heard through the grapevine that there was some concerns about uh, potential damage being done to the Spartina uh, by all the craft. And it's true, there's certainly a, a tremendous growth, it seems, in particular of kayaks. Uh, I know we have one neighbor who seems to not really like any activity at the public landings, which I think precipitated this. Um, but in any case, I had some concerns because, you know, where we kept our dinghy, and, and this is true of the entire community, I'm up on Blackfish Creek by Pleasant Point, um, but I'm close with lots of people all the way around. And, and, you know, for whatever, my family for 50 years, we've kept our dinghy in this place. And there have been other people as well, keeping their dinghies alongside us. And we've never had any die back there. Like the, the, the Spartina is quite healthy kept our dinghies. Um, my concern is that by having it above the rack line, in particular because of the issues around, this connects to the, well, the oyster development that's out there as well, just in terms of the timing of when you have to get there, when you can come and go, 
But the reality is that I end up dragging that dinghy across the Spartina now, you know, twice a tide. And, you know, so far we're okay, but I can certainly see other places where people have done this and you get a track, like you'll get a, you'll get dieback, you'll get a, you'll get a trail caused by that, that activity. Um, I hope that's not what's going to happen here, but it is, it is a, it, it's a concern to me because if the objective was to protect the, the marsh, I think you might have the opposite effect. Flip side, you know, having now watched it for a season, um, we're above the rack and we're flipped over. One thing I will say that I think is positive about that development is that by having it flipped over, it doesn't accumulate rainwater. So we uh, might see some advantage from fewer mosquitoes. If that was one of the concerns, I know that that was, there was a lot of complaining in town about that. I, I, I find it kind of funny because the mosquitoes were nowhere near as bad in Washington as they were out in Western Mass this year, but we didn't hear <laughs> <laughs> complaining nearly as much out where we are. Um, but uh, it's just part of living in nature, I think. But in any case, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I don't know if that was one of the reasons. If it was, I could see there was no standing water in the dinghy this year, and that, that may be a benefit. But if your objective is to protect the Spartina, I think it may be a misguided policy. And I just, I wanted to bring that to the group's attention because, you know, I can do it. It's not a big deal, but I do think it may end up causing more damage to the Spartina, which I don't think is what you're trying to do. Do we let me, let me ask a question, Ted. Is there, um, who owns the property where you keep your dinghy? Yeah, it's a fair question. I believe that's town property there, if I remember right. Um, again, it's, it's, a, it's one of those things that we and neighbors and so forth, the community has kept our dinghies there time out of mind. Um, and we don't have dieback where we keep the dinghies. There's dieback nearby, but not there. Which and is there no beach where you can keep the dinghy? The, the beach has been slowly lost owing to the revetment that's been installed on Lieutenant's Island. So there used to be more beach, but no, there's no, there's there's beach above the Spartina. There's a little bit of beach there and that's where it's been put there. But, it, but otherwise you'd be depriving people. There's a little tiny bit of beach nearby and people use it. You know, you don't wanna be keeping your, your boats there. Well, they are being uh, kept there on Powers Landing and other beaches on town property. Um, and the harbor master is the one who gives permits for the dinghies. Right. Not us. But um, I think in, in looking at the situation, we'd rather have it on the beach than on the grass. Um, and that's why, I mean, I don't know your particular area where, where you're keeping it. I have a general idea of where it is, but I don't know the exact conditions. But yeah. there were a lot of vessels being stored right on the marsh in the grass. And there was a lot of erosion from people walking to them, dragging them down, and that mm. kind of thing. So that's why we, um, we initiated this um, to try to have people put their stuff on the beach. And if you look across to Audubon, uh, that's their property where there were over, over 100 kayaks in the last few years. Yeah. And we've asked them to have the people who store them there move them down to the beach and not on the grass. So they have a little bit of beach to move them down onto. I yeah. don't know if you have that. No, I mean, in this case, the beach is above the grass, you know, so, um, and it's right by the, it's right near, we keep it right near where the, there's a kayak rack up there on Pleasant Point. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, so, so we're up near, we're up near there. And, uh, and again, there's, at this point, we may be the only one left. People have had this nasty habit of dying. Um, so, you know, there are fewer <laughs> now than there have been at any time, but, uh, and, and there's three of us sharing the one. But um, like I say, it's never been a problem there. Uh, I think it may become a problem. It is your jurisdiction as the CONCOM to make that call. You know, I, I'm not an ignorant person. I know a little bit about, you know, what you're trying to do here. I've been on CONCOM as well for my community. And I appreciate I appreciate the, the you know the intent. I just actually don't think that you've got it right in this case, uh, as far as where we're concerned. And what I've seen down by Payne Hollow, it's a similar situation. Um, you know, boats that have been put down near the break, so near the basically mid tide part, where you kind of wade out to your launch uh, through the grass, you end up you know vessels that have been housed there moored there for a time out of mind with no dieback and erosion problems. Um, they're now being kept up, up up by the rack line. We're going to have issues there uh, under this policy over time. Uh, that's that's what I expect. Maybe it won't be an issue. 
but it just it seemed like it seemed like an action to restrict behavior on the part of the town that was both unnecessary and may lead to uh, results that are the opposite of what you're hoping to do. So I just, you know. Michael, do you have something you want to say? Perhaps? Yeah, I just had uh, two questions. First of all, do you have a license from the Harbor Master? Yes, of course. And how did you get it? Because we're finding a lot of shellfish and people and people with moorings don't have them. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if you if you know the how the harbor master works, but you get a form that you fill out every year. You license your boat. You indicate what you have for a tender. And so there's a sticker on your on your vessel on your yes. on your tender. Yes, although I don't know if they've given us stickers in recent years. They used to. Um, I'm not that that was the issue that the harbor master, the previous harbor master, said that they somehow couldn't get the stickers anymore from the company. Yeah. And the difficulty is we're trying when we're looking at this uh, to find out which boats are in fact permitted because they have a mooring or because they're shellfish people or which are just dumped there. And there's, right. if there's no stickers, we can't tell. So that's why <laughs> this is uh, something we're trying to, to get the new Harbor Master to be better about is making sure that the boats that should be there are indicated so that we know which ones are not supposed to be there. And the second, yeah. I'm not sure <laughs> what you're suggesting, you're saying you'd rather moor it down in the Spartina or yeah. in the water? Yeah, in, in, in the past, what, what, what we were doing is we just had a Danforth anchor um, with a line and buoy on it that we would simply you know, wedge that into the Spartina. Now, I imagine you might have an issue with that, but <laughs> it's better than digging, digging it up. Um, and, and that would just be where we'd hook in and it was right down, right down in the Spartina that, that we've been using for ever. And is there a, a, a narrow path there? In other words, if everybody went through the same path, there might be yeah. less damage. Yeah, there's, there's no path at all. There's no erosion. There's no erosion. You can't tell that there's any effect where I am. If you go over toward Payne Hollow, though, there's a series of them up as they're now mandated to be you can see a very clear path. And also a little bit further out Pleasant Point, there's also a clear path over there where people do um, concentrate and walk across the marsh. So I'm not sure that that's what you're trying to achieve either. But yeah, it's just, it seems to me that we were the, again, it's not, it's not a huge problem for us. It just looked like, it just struck me that policy that you've enacted is, is likely to have the opposite effect of what you're trying to achieve. And so I, I, in the interest of trying to be helpful, I thought I'd raise that comment. Not a huge deal for us, but I, I think it's, um, it just seemed, it, it seemed like an odd situation where you had somebody, you know, we've been doing this forever. Suddenly we we're told we can't do this anymore. And what we're asked to do is gonna cause the problem that you asked us to do it to avoid. It just felt the kind of thing that makes people disrespect government. <laughs> I think that the, uh... What we were trying to accomplish was the dozens of, of kayaks that are left everywhere. Rather than taking them home or putting them back on top of their car, they just leave it on top of the grass. And that's, yeah. that was the main yeah. thing we were trying to get at. And yeah, and, and that may be what you have to do. I mean, I, I get it. And, um, you know, the kayaks on the rack up there, are, I think a lot of those haven't been used in, in several years. I think they're, they, they're either abandoned or, you know, it's a very popular place to store boats now. Um, and, uh, you know, whatever, it's better on the racks than in the grass. I actually, I, I was really happy when you guys put those racks up. I thought that was a great move. Um, and, and you got to do what you got to do. I just, it just, it struck me as a little bit odd. And, um, you know, I remember just talking to Chuck Cole at the time. Again, he's one of the people that I know that that's done this kind of thing forever. And he had a, another solution, but I guess that got shot down, which was to use a, um, a line that would like, that allowed you to keep it out on the edge, but that you could actually bring it in when it when the when the water's high enough to float it over the grass, so you don't have to drag it across it. Hmm. We we never heard that solution. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if he, he presented that to the harbor master or who he presented it to, but we never heard that. No. I, yeah. I think it was more that he. Yeah. I, I suspect it was to the harbor master. He told me that he talked to somebody about it, and and it makes sense that that's who it would have been. <laughs> Well, thank you for coming forward. It, it's clear that, uh, like everything else to do with, with our review, individual items are 
it's hard to have an overall uh, rule when each thing has a different location, a different circumstance, and we have to roll with the punches somewhat. But but it's good yeah, to hear. Well, sure, and 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 uh, in in the email that I sent, this was this was the thing I was least concerned about. <laughs> To be honest, um, yeah, I think the uh, the way the the moorings are being managed right now is is actually quite quite worrisome. And if anybody's that's been out there recently can see that, you know, I appreciate um, that uh, that that was it, Mike Sullivan there that he's he's trying to just implement rules that have always been on the books, but the way they're being implemented, it's kind of a problem. Uh, and and maybe if they had people out in the creeks a little bit more. From the harbor master's office, perhaps if they spent more time out there, um, especially at low tide, they might have a better sense of what's going on. The moorings right now, the entire all the moorings out there are not dug in, which may be better again for the bottom. Again, one of my concerns is we used to always keep our moorings under the mud, you know, buried there so that they're marked with a short length of polypropylene rope, so you can find them in the spring. They stay buried. They don't rust like that. And and but now people are pulling them, and they're not digging them in. So you've got you. Which I get that may be better because when you dig them in every year, you you create scars in the substrate, and you know you disturb that substrate, and those marks remain. You know I can see where I've done it. Um, after even even a couple of years, it's surprising. I thought it would just get out by the ice and the tide, but it's you can still see it. So, are not the moorings supposed to be inspected every year? Yep. Yep. So they would have to be pulled, wouldn't they, to do that? Unless they came out to the flats to inspect them in place, which is what I proposed. Um, and, and again, I think that would lead to less disruption. If you actually kept them properly deployed, they could, they could inspect them in place. You could charge. Again, this may be more for the harbor master, but my, my proposal was to charge people a deposit. So when you put it out, you get the GPS location so you know just where it is. Um, and you, you put down $500 or whatever it will cost them to pull it out if you, if you, if you abandon it, because that's one of the problems. It's literally with abandoned moorings out there. Um, uh, so, so I made that proposal to them, but I've never, you know, I, I, I don't get a lot of traction with it. So. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get a response from the Harbor Master when I, when I, when I make suggestions. It's changed. Flanagan used to actually be communicative. I, I'm afraid Sullivan has not been so much, but there it is. John? Uh, it's a couple of things. One is, um, I think what 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 the problem we have here is carrying capacity. That basically one person with one tender, um, his solution in fact may be more damaging than what we're proposing. But we have no way of guaranteeing it will be one person with one tender. Gonna, you, three or four, then I do not see the argument that our solution will be less damaging if we move past the one person and the one tender. Um, so I do think it's an carrying capacity. We have no way to, to monitor that. Um, the town would, I suspect, or the harbor master would, be, uh, would object if we said, you know, we limited how many moorings could be. Well, I, they have, but if we said we'd only have you know, one tender, um, you know, then who gets that tender? I just think that's a problem we don't want to be in. Let me just say as a person who has a mooring in the harbor, um, from the point of safety, not the environment, but safety, burying your, your anchor is far safer, um, both in terms of, of the anchor moving, your boat moving, and also um, people, you know, jumping off of the boat, um, I'd rather they landed on sand than on, you know, one of those uh, um, mushroom moorings. But that's a different issue. Yeah, it, it is. And, and the regulations, my concern. Concern. It, it must be dug in. Like the regulations are very clear that it must be dug in. Um, but again, they're enforcing one part of the regulation, not another part of the regulation. As to the multiple boats, whatever the current, the current regs are one tender per mooring. Um, so there is a constraint there. I don't know how the kayaks are getting permitted. I, I've never tried to permit a kayak, so I don't know what the procedure is there. That seems like a place that you might actually be able to make some change because there's a lot of, there's a lot of vessels that have nothing to do with, with tending the moorings. And so that, that may be actually something you could do to try to limit it. But if you do look at the places where people drag their, their, their tenders across the marsh, 
you can see that there's an, there's an impact there. And, th and that was all. I mean, it was just, it, it struck me that we're going to end up with additional damage to the marsh as a consequence of this, of this you know, policy. And I just wanted to sort of you have a chance to, to float that thought. Perhaps it's worth just paying attention, you know, let it keep it for a while and just be paying attention and see, see if there's an issue developing. If everything's great or if things get better, then it's a good policy. If things get worse, you know, then maybe it's not a good policy. I think that's a good idea. I think we're yeah. not finished with this. It's been ongoing and um, it may need some tweaking and maybe we'll do a site visit next spring, summer and see what's happening out there again. Um, I, I noticed some changes this year, as you said, some people even putting their kayaks way up in the marsh and then having to drag them down. But usually there's a sand path or something already established that they're doing that with. So different sites have different issues, I think, as well. Yeah, that's um, exactly. And it, right. And I know it's like you don't want to get so that everything's so fine tuned that. Well, the, the, the other thing would be if the harbor master were there, they could come out and say, you know what? Here's how you're set up. I want you to put your dinghy here. <laughs> yeah. This is like everyone could get in a time spot. Then the harbor master would have to know that. They'd have to keep track of that. They'd have to keep records and they'd have to take care of enforcement. Right now, again, I'm in the creek. We never see them out there. I'm, I, I guess they come out once a year uh, because they did come out and help people with dinghies and, and re rearrange things. But um, it'd be nice to have a little more of a presence out there. I, I get the sense there's a disconnect. Uh, between the harbor master and the uh, and, and the way things are done in the creeks. Um. Okay. Well, that was uh, good to hear. <laughs> thanks for your time, everybody. I appreciate it, and thanks. Thank for you, Ted. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Did we get any mail? Does anybody know if we got any mail? I don't we think do you got anything worth talking about. Um, there's the issue about Trudy coming back or not coming back. In oh, yeah. Yep. So. yep. Um, I reached out to Trudy to see if she would join the commission um, <clears throat> for a couple months in the wintertime while folks seem to be vacationing. Um, there was also the thought that the more people, the more members we have, uh, um, the, I, I guess, I'm trying to choose my words carefully here and I'm not choosing any. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> well, okay. Um, I think it's better to have more members voting on cases than less members voting yes. on cases. Right. Um, just because it makes for a better discussion and a better outcome. Right. And so people my feel thought free to uh, vote their conscience. Yes. So my thought was that if we could get seven members uh, through the winter, that would be great. And I only reached out to Trudy because she has done that role for us in the past. I mean, I could have reached out to John Portnoy as well, but I just assumed he'd be in Costa Rica or, you know, traveling somewhere else. So Trudy's usually around in the winter. Um, I reached out to her. I haven't heard back. I did talk with our friends at Friends of Herring River about the submittal of that application, and we are going to push that to February, um, just because, John Cumbler, you're back in February, right? Correct. And, and I turned in my, my potential conflict of interest form today. Okay, perfect. Great. And I'm just going back to this sheet in my book where I have all of your vacation schedules, because... Leon is here in February. You're going away in December. That's right. You're going away next week. Um, <laughs> okay. And Marty will be back in February, right? Because you're going away for January. Yes. Okay. And Barbara is still going to recuse and you're going to be away in February. And Michael Fisher will be here. And Ben, um, you could make the same disclosure that John Cumbler made so that you could sit on the commission for the Herring River as well if you would be open to considering that because I think your input is valuable. And as you can see, I'm clearly trying to get as many of our regular members present and able to vote as is possible. 
um, because the more members we have, just the better the better it is. So I would ask you to consider that, um, consider making the disclosure and give it some real thought because. Mm -hmm. you don't have a true conflict that would eliminate you from participation. Okay. That's because you worked on the uh, Herring River stuff before. Is that why you're recusing? Uh, just an ongoing project that they are supporting. Uh, so oh, I, I don't, yeah, I, I'm not too familiar with the, um, with how all of this works. So I just um, was getting some advice from people and that was, um, what I concluded, but I, if you can send me the disclosure and instructions, like what, whatever, what John yeah. has done, um, yeah. to tell me how I'll, I'll think about it. Ben, okay. re ben received the Palladino. Wasn't it the Palladino? Yeah. Yes. Fellowship. Yeah. 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 And that's a one-time, um, a this... one-time scholarship. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Can I, ben, I, strongly urge you to do the forms a simple two pages just put down you know basic information it's not a big deal uh you don't have to revive you know reveal you know you know your social security number anything. but um it is it is it's your input is very valuable and as a member of the commission i would much rather have you on the commission who have been on the commission for a while, then mm. start pulling people in. Uh, I mean, as much as I love Trudy and she's been on the commission forever, um, I think I, I would like you to be there for this these discussions. So I strongly urge you to fill that form out. It's not a big deal. Well, and then- Yeah, no, I, I hear you for sure. Yep, thank you. Because then we would have five people. Hmm. Which Doesn't Ben have to consult the um, an attorney for the state ethics board also? Um, we consulted one for Ben. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. He Just because I wanted to, to make, make sure um, I wanted to make sure that it was legit before I asked. Okay. Consider. Okay, then I, I will go ahead and do that Great. in that case. Yeah, we'll get you the disclosure information. You so just set, turn it in to the town clerk once you yep. fill it out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Does is it is it is there any other things that we should discuss before we go on to uh, jurisdictional opinions? Um, I don't have any jurisdictional opinions. Um, just a heads up that at our January fifth meeting, Greg Berman is coming, so he and I. Um, have corresponded about our various beach nourishment issues um, and the different interests. So he's going to come. I told him not to prepare any kind of PowerPoint presentation because I think it's more useful that we can just pick his brain and um, he will bring to the table some experiences from I think Orleans he and I talked about where they had a similar, similar problem, um, but in the opposite. So, so I thought we could just talk with him. And then at our January 19th meeting, we have Gordon coming to the business meeting for his client on, oh, I think it's King Philip. Um, it was a project that Steve Phillips presented to the commission sometime in the past year. And we went back and forth with him about a nourishment amount and a quantity of sand for this particular property. Um, I can just hold tight and I'll tell you the address because maybe it will ring a bell to you. Is it Miller? It is Miller. Yes. Okay. One, um, uh, the, oh, it is King Philip, 246 King Philip. It's okay. Miller. Mm -hmm. um, we went back and forth on the proper amount of nourishment for that property and the current belief is that we do the length of the bank times the height of the bank times the erosion rate to get us an amount of sand. And this bank is very tall and it turned out to be a lot of sand. Um, and 
Mr. Miller doesn't think that that amount of sand is accurate for his site because it's more than his neighbors are putting down and it's rather costly. Um, but the calculation is the calculation. And so Gordon on Mr. Miller's behalf will be asking for a reduction in sediment. So, um, so we'll have that discussion on the 19th, but I just want you to keep that in mind. Um, on the fifth, when we talked to right. Greg about beach nourishment, so yeah, it's good. good that we'll have that opportunity here. Yeah, before we have to make a decision. Yes. Okay, uh, we do have some meeting minutes to approve. I read them; they look great. Thank you, Barbara and Chris and Michael. It was mostly Michael. So it was Thank mostly Chris, Michael. actually. Mostly Chris and Michael. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, good job. They look great. Uh, I move that we uh, approve the December 1st, 1st uh, meeting minutes. Second, okay. Barbara. All right. Marty, how do you vote? So, yes. I vote yes. Barbara? Yes. Uh, John? Yes. And Mike? Yes. And Benjamin? Yes. All right. Great. I'm glad you uh, that both Benjamin and John have Join this since we opened the meeting. That's great. Okay, so is there anything else we should talk about before five o'clock? Um, Leon, John? sure. A point of information, and Barbara may have noticed this as well, but we've been doing turtle walks on the bay side, and um, there is an extreme amount of erosion happening this year. There are rocks that I've never seen and structures that I've structures that I've never seen before that are now exposed. And I've noticed, although the, the sand, um, burlap sandbags in front of the Blash House are holding up much better than I thought they would, on either end, mm -hmm. getting to see scouring and, yeah. um, uh, and, and problems. Uh, That's the same problems we see. Just, there's a and, and, and also, and this is a this is a problem too. Um, most high tides, not just once a month, but most high tides, we can't walk that the beach because at that section of the walk because the waves are right up against the sand. Um, it's and Barbara, you write work that much more than I do, but so is that do you is that what you're feeling? Yes, most most high tides now um, you can't get past those sandbags at all. Um, the other thing I noticed is that the house to the north where they had a stairway, they took the bottom of the stairway down, but they left the posts. And right now, one of the posts is, looks like it's going to going to be washed away. So I don't know what their order of conditions was, Hillary. I think they had to take the stairway, bottom of the stairway down, but they left the posts that hold the stairway Um so they're going to be washed away. To the north, that's, is that Dr. Weller or is that? That's, one? that's the one that cut through the bank yeah. that we were con right. very concerned about. Yep. I got it. Is it Dr. Weller's or no, it's the next is one. Is Dr. Weller's the one that, that's curvy, has a roof line that's kind of curvy like the gym? No, no, no. No, no. no this well, is. Well, that's farther this, north, right? I right. think it's Halloran. Uh, um, I don't know. Let me, um, I'll find it. Yeah, we were very concerned about how they put that stairway in. Instead of going over the bank, they went through the bank. Yeah. And, and they were supposed to come to us or something was supposed to happen and it never did. They well, have to. I, I thought that we'd looked into it and that they, no. they'd been permitted to do that. Yeah, they were permitted. They were permitted to relocate it. But we should have specified how to do it, not just where to do it, I guess. It's our fault that we didn't do that. Um, let me pull the file and I'll look again. But anyway, the, the posts at the bottom are, there's a big tree wrapped around one of them and it's leaning over and that's going to wash away. Okay. But yeah, everyone should take a look at that scouring there. Um, and also some of the, um, the, the uh, beach grass plugs on top 
have mm -hmm. caved in. Like there's yeah. a whole section of those that have just caved in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's really this? What's this location, Barbara? It's what? um, fourteen forty Chickasset Neck Road. Fourteen forty. Last house on the right. Just sold. Just sold. Right. <laughs> To who 5.5 knows? million. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know the house. Okay. Yeah. I know, yeah. I know what you're talking about. If you want, I have the Halloran minutes. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, it is Halloran, though, right? Or I, uh, Yeah. 1360 okay, West Nook Road. Great. I, I hope you can see that. 1360. Oh, that's everything I need, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> I, I can't look at the date at the same time I'm doing this, I think, but I can, if you want, I can try. Oh, sorry. Nope. <laughs> Got rid of everything I needed. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Uh, control F here. Is this last year? I'm, I'm looking. Wait a minute. Uh, 18. Halloran. In the spring. Uh, Eight. Spring. Three there years. it is. You just had it right. Yeah, Eight there years. it is. I'm having trouble with this things jumping around. But anyway, that's the... Uh, that's can you close really, the navigation bar? I can. I, yeah, it looks there, like there, there is no detail about how that stairway would be put in. It was to change the location, but um, there's probably uh, see, no, nothing in the order of conditions <laughs> as to not blasting through the coastal bank. Yeah, this is a uh, problem with my mouse here. I'm having a little trouble here. Let's see if I can do that. So we we didn't we were remiss in not being more descriptive about what that stairway should look like. Um, well, maybe I would say we need to look at the plan and see what we actually approved because I yeah. thought the plan shows the exact location where it's going. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. That that's a good idea, but there's not not much detail in the minutes about it. No. I'll check the plan. My my sense is the problem is the plan is going to show you where the staircase and have a description of the staircase. The problem is that they blasted through the bank, and and I don't know how. I mean, who would have known that they would do that? Um, and how would we anticipate that? We can't sort of every order of condition and you can't, you know, blast through the, you can't dig a hole and drop dynamite in it. I mean, there's limits to how much we can ask. Um, well, no, no, I think it will show the elevations on the plan. It will show where the, the stairwell was going, right? Right, I know that, but oh. that's the problem is that well, you know, have you seen the, the staircase? Because they literally. Yes, I have, yes, I've seen it. A so that's, <laughs> I don't see how we, I mean, I, I would love to be able to say it was our fault, but I can't see how we could have anticipated they would have done this. Because I, you know, I can't imagine we would say, oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> right. I, mean, I, I think, I think we let the town down on that one if we just didn't see on the plan exactly how they were doing that. Um, okay. The a lot data, of complaints about that one. Yep. The date on that meeting was April 18th, 2018. So these were the people that were on the commission before at that time. Yeah. That puts me there. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't think let's look at the plan and see what it looks like. Oh, okay. There you go. But I, I well, we should have seen. <laughs> It should have been seen that with a site visit that there was a, a berm there and that you, but you live and you learn, lessons learned. I mean, the seashore was even in a butter and they commented, they were commented about it as well. So um, I don't think they would have um, said, okay, yeah, just blast through that bank. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a... Uh... Oh, can't, can't, uh, deal with. Okay, anything else? 
we can take a break until five. So I move that we adjourn the business meeting until the hearing starts at 5 p.m. Second. Marty? Yes. Barbara? Yes. John? Yes. Michael? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. And I, I, from me too. Yes. All right. We'll see you guys at six o'clock. We've got 20 minutes. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Sorry. Six is my deadline. All right. We'll see you later. Pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 38, paragraphs 18 through 25, as amended by Chapter 28 of the Acts of 2009, the Wetlands Protection Act, and to the Wellfleet Environmental Protection Bylaw of July 1986 and its regulations of January 2000, the Wellfleet Conservation Commission will hold public hearings on Wednesday, December 15, 2021, at 5 p.m., with a business meeting starting at 4 p.m., be a remote meeting pursuant to the governor to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's orders imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted at this meeting. Town hall is closed to the public. Board members will participate in this meeting remotely. Currently, we have Marty Murphy, Bobby Brennacell, John Cumbler. Uh, Michael, are you here? Okay, and Benjamin. Benjamin's here. Yes. So we certainly have a quorum. The first hearing is Thompson Romano. Is there someone to speak to that? I don't see either one of them present. Um, it's 501, do we wanna continue it to the end of the agenda and come back to it or we could continue it to our next hearing? Oh, uh, well, let's, uh, let, let's come back to it at the end of the meeting. Okay, next one is Manning. Luke, are you here? Hello. Oh, there's Luke. Hi. <laughs> okay, we went out there and looked at your property. And so you want to use that brick that looks like stone brick and then go down to the corner of the of the property and then cut over to the back of the of the garage. Is that right? Yes. Does anyone in the in the uh, commission have anything to ask or say about that? Uh, yes, Leo. Bear. Yes, Michael, go ahead. So we were out there and it wasn't staked. So it's not clear exactly where you're planning to put the, uh, the, the new wall. Could you just sort of <laughs> explain? Oh, let me show you what we've got. Can you see that? Not yet. Not yet. Not there. You got it. Yep. Yes. Okay. There is a, there is a stake down there by the uh, in, by the garage corner down the hill. There. Down the hill. So right. is it coming yeah. right along the edge of the property there? What is what's the relationship between that new wall and this, for example? Very interesting question. <laughs> um. Let's see. I think we want to hear from Michelle and Luke. So everyone else, if they could remain on mute so that they could describe their project, please. Can you hear me now? You're a little garbled. Okay. Is that, is that... Talk a little more. Okay. No. Do you know the song? Maybe we can. I don't know what else to do. Yeah. You could call in. Um, if you go to the agenda, there should be a call in number. Hold on one second, and I will get that for you. It's 929 209 205 
6099. Oops. I couldn't one, get a number. 1929-205-6099. Is that, is that better, Hill? Yes, yes that's, that's better. better. Okay. Oh. I'll take it off the earbuds. So you might have kids in the background at some point. That's it. That's fine. Go ahead. Okay, so the 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 um the property line was staked and actually um that you can see one of the stakes in the uh photograph you have here, oh, which is this little stake? Yes, that's that's one right there. Wow. Um and there's another one further yeah, down. There's one down in yeah, the one. in the woods there. Yes, yeah. there's one halfway down too in the bush. There's one halfway down in the bush, and then there's there's one that's um, pretty much under the corner of the uh, the side porch on the property next door. Hmm. Okay. Um, you mean this? Yep. Yeah, it's it's right over there. <laughs> so how how is the line going to you know just cut across this porch? No. Yes, the, this corner of brick, this second step, and the corner of that porch is all our property. Mm. And then it continues on that same trajectory back behind the neighbor's property. Mm. From yeah. this corner, this stake here, I, I'm pointing at the screen like you can see mm -hmm. me. <laughs> but <from> that, <laughs> that stake, directly to that deck corner mm -hmm. if if you follow that line and continue it back into the woods is the way that that property line goes so our intention is to follow our property line along there with this brick continue it to the depth that it intersects with where the back garage corner is and L it back towards the garage corner. Yep, to right there. Yeah. So come okay. off that back garage corner towards that deck and then come at an angle along our property line there. Mm -hmm. How long is this, uh, these, how long did your neighbor, how long, how long ago did they build on your property? I guess that's the question. They we've only owned the house for a couple of years, so we aren't sure. Um, the the that corner of the deck is not a permitted deck. Hmm. We've checked the records, and that particular section of deck was not an approved permitted section. They have a permit for the rear section, and they were asked to shrink their rear section from what they originally built and then this particular section which is basically the kitchen door leading to the back is an unpermitted area so when it was built is unknown uh, have you talked to the neighbors about this we've talked to them several times how did they receive it that we actually offered to provide materials and labor to adjust it so that it was back onto their um, property. And they um, not only refused, but suggested that they actually wanted to expand it further. Do you know what you mentioned the permit um, for it that wasn't for the back section? When was that permit issued? Do you know? Uh, 2000. I, I don't recall. Might have it upstairs, but it's it's not like ten years ago or fifteen years ago or something like that. It's I, it's more than ten. It's more than ten. Okay, yeah. well, from from our commission standpoint, we are interested in the impact on the environment. All this other right. stuff about correct tension over over uh, property lines and stuff, we can't even take that into account. All we have to look at is right the effect on the environment. Uh, does anybody in the commission have any questions other than what Michael asked earlier? Uh, Leon? Yes, John. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm working on getting you back up here. There we go. Okay. Right, go ahead, guess, John. Um, um, they're asking for an amendment to the order of conditions. Um, can we see what the order of conditions were? 
It was for the dwelling, the septic system, the whole lot renovation. All right, but were there order of conditions that in any way um, might come to play on this? This, I mean, what did they ask for? Well, I've got it up there. I think you may be able to see uh, mm -hmm. November 7th, 2018. So uh -huh. a bit more than three years ago. Is this the, the last? Yep. Yeah. So the actual, the orders of condition have expired. Is that correct? No, that's not correct. Because of the COVID tolling, they get an extra 400 and some odd days to complete the work. Oh, OK. Okay. That's interesting. I think the the last piece that we had to fulfill those order conditions was to loam and seed that back area. And that we're sort of working from our north border across the house to finish. And actually that area that's supposed to be loamed and seeded, had, it's the very backyard where the septic was installed. And it's all, there's no movement of soil because it's all been revegetated with weeds and whatnot. And I know the loam and seeding was to prevent any shifting of soil, but that's sort of nature's taken over that job for us. But our intention is also to finish that as we finish the rest of the yard. And there were no special conditions put on by the commission. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Yep. The um, how far? Where's the hundred foot line? Let me see if I can see that. The hundred foot line is. Is, yeah, it's on the site plan. Yeah. Okay. We're looking at the site plan also. It's here in front of us. Yeah. So this is all within the 50 to 100. Yes. Correct. And there's a little bit outside the 100 as well. All right. Well, oh, that's really interesting that uh, the neighbors uh, cut over on that. It's, I'm sure that there was some uh, miscommunication at some point. Yeah, well, like Michelle said, we'd we'd like to um, use our our labor and materials to try to uh, change the layout of that entryway to the kitchen. But um, ideally, we'd be able to. Uh, level out or regrade the area on that steep hillside and um, define the property border. Mm. All right, this is Barbara. I just want to ask a question. And the reason for this wall is it to stabilize something or to create more level area or? It, it's to create more level area. Um, right now, it's, it's pretty wild on that hillside. It's hard to even, uh, you, you can't really navigate it by foot and it's real hard to maintain um, or to even weed whack or anything like that. And um, it, it would be nice to have, have more level area and be able to maintain and work on that side of the building and um, have, have it easier to navigate by foot. Thank you. My understanding is that this is within the 100, but none of this construction is going to happen within the 50. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Yep. And, and the area is already pretty much disturbed. Correct. Uh, on, the, on your application, you say the total area of disturbance is 669 square feet. That doesn't include the house or the septic system or anything like that, right? That's just- I use the numbers that were provided on our site plan. And then I added the area of the wall to the right. numbers I had. I didn't go and then remeasure. I just thought that we, we were just adding to the numbers we were already given which is what the original order conditions was based on. So you took the square footage of the footprint of the house, is that right? Yeah. Um, no. no, no. 
I on the site plan it says 50 to 100 foot buffer zone disturbance mm -hmm. and then it had retaining wall structures walking path and concrete slab and apron and then I took and actually in the in the buffer zone the in the buffer zone the garage and two of the corners of the house are within the zone buffer zone and the rest of the house is not. So I just took the numbers provided on the site plan as from the total area of disturbance within that zone. Uh, okay. Other than Marty Murphy, uh, other than uh, being along the property line, which you're entitled to do, is there any reason why it has to be along the property line? Can, can it be back? you know, five feet or 10 feet or something like that? Well, we'd, we'd like to take advantage of the square footage that we have there um, and be able to put it to better use and, and be able to maintain it. Um, and basically level, leveling that out seems basically like- Basically we have a very small usable flattened area in the entire property and the back of the yard is not levelable any more than it already is. So since this is our land and it's in the front, we want uh, to- I understand it's your land, but yeah. I'm just trying to f find out why you, why is it absolutely necessary to have it go down the property line? Can, can, can't you be back a bit? Because it's tiny, because it's just tiny total. Well, originally- well, I can argue that. that. I mean, it's- there again, we don't need to, I don't think we need to try to accommodate the neighbors on this. That's not our, we really should just be looking at this is, do we have an issue with what it might do to the environment? And it looks to me like certainly you don't have, you haven't surpassed the uh, allowable disturbance within the, the buffer zone. And the, the only real effect is that you're going to be removing that little piece of lawn and those uh, bushes there, those shrubs, and replacing them with something, I take it. What did you have in mind to replace them with? The application says crushed shell. No, just, yeah, just, we, don't, we aren't actually very particular with what is we're replacing it with. We just figured crushed shell was the most commonly used surface area. It could easily just be grass again. Or some or, plantings. Um, again, our, our primary focus was just to have that area be more level. So yeah. it's more, more usable. Right. But if, if you had- if you Establishing had, your property lines, probably a good idea. Right, but if you had plantings on it, it wouldn't be as usable as crushed shell. You wouldn't even be able to walk over there if you had like blueberry bushes or something like that. No, I, I didn't. I didn't mean to 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 pack it full of uh, plantings. But you, you know, if there was like a ornamental grass or or something in the corner, yeah, that wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility. But for the sake of um, handing in the application and trying to have something to provide you and something we could follow we we figured crushed shell is pretty uh it's pretty common i i don't see any reason why we should deny this um amended order i don't either i, I just have a question for hillary though if we were to approve this is it still form five or is there a form for an amended order of conditions? No, it's still the order of conditions form and we just check off amended on the- um, Okay, papers. all right. On our end. So is that a move motion, Barbara? Um, well, let's, if so I moved, we can, we can, we can still we discuss. We can uh -huh. still discuss it. Yes, um, I think I, I'm, I'm thinking the crushed shell would be okay because right now it looks like there's just a bunch of weeds in the area. Mm -hmm. uh, was there somebody that was trying to talk just then? I think yeah. so. I, I think Zero. if we could, it, yeah, just Leon, if we could ask folks um, 
to raise their hand, Michael, if you could maybe possibly stop screen sharing, we could see yeah. everyone. And if folks who want to talk um, could raise their hand so we could keep it semi orderly, that would be great. The raised hand function is in the reactions um, on the bottom of the screen. If you see where it says reactions, click on that and there's a raised hand. Okay, Mr. Figueria. Hello. But this is actually Mrs. Jenkins, the neighbor that you've been speaking about next <laughs> okay. door. Okay. And yeah. she wanted to ask a question. Um, I have used this property as is just about 42 years. So this is this has really been gonna create a hardship, it seems. Uh, I did ask Luke if we could straighten out my deck where the kink is. That kink in the deck where I, all I wanted to do is straighten it out um, was okayed by a farmer building inspector, Paul Murphy. It goes back a few years. Uh, and actually when we found out um, all about this new lot line, we got surveyed he felt it was almost an abomination that I was going to be in the spot I was in. So he allowed me to have that kink, um, which is kind of difficult if you're carrying something to try to get through to the rear of the deck. Um, that's all I asked uh, of Luke, is to let me straighten out that deck mm -hmm. and to continue to use, to be able to access my deck from my door. I didn't think that was going to be a serious right. Uh, and there, that's not really within our that those kinds of negotiations are not within the purview of what we can make a decision. I, I re I realize that, but I I just heard a comment that I did not agree with. I've been trying to work with Luke, uh, I'm trying to be a good neighbor and put up with uh, a lot of dirt and mess and whatever, and and I I want to be a good neighbor. Um, and what is the um, well, uh, yes, and I would urge that you continue working together to straighten that out before, but uh, there again, that's nothing that we can okay. we can rule on. I move that we accept this. Uh, um, Leon, we have one this, more comment from the screen. Oh, oh, yes, Bannon. we do. Oh, so, I'm sorry, Sue. Go ahead. You're, You're on mute, Sue. You Hold still, on. There you go. Am I, not, am I unmuted now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I just have a question about um, the drainage flow, like the natural drainage of the lot. If um, on the north side, a wall is put in. And I mean, I don't know anything about the, the construction of it or anything, but I'm just kind of, you know, wondering if, if that is going to be impacted. The natural uh, flow of rainwater and you know that kind of stuff. Yeah, can I? You have two things: you have drainage into the wetland, and then you also have erosion. So those are the two things that you need to look at. Is when water mm -hmm. flows, it takes the sand with it. So if you right. stop, if you stop the water and let it sink, it won't be eroding the sand. One would think. Um, I I guess I don't. I'm I'm just inquiring as to how the drainage goes on that north side now with the slope and and the the little bit of grass that's there and stuff I, I'm just inquiring I, I don't I don't really know but I'm was just wondering if that's a consideration so there's a um, the, the the pitch of the garage roof sheds the water off of the roof onto that hillside um, mm -hmm. so if it was a more level area, even without a, a replacing a gutter, which is non-existent now, it would um, it, it would let the water drop onto a onto a permeable surface and and drain straight down instead of um, digging at the hillside. I think that in either case, I think that the uh, there's not a lot of erosion there. There's so many weeds and stuff right now that that the sand doesn't really move, but. Um, right. And I would, you know, part of the reason why we want to do this is so that eventually when we, when we're able to, we can maintain that, that garage better and, and uh, be able to work on that side of the garage, including putting a proper gutter and downspout and direct the 
the runoff from that roof. So I okay. think it might, so, yeah. No, I, so I just want to understand that um, with the retaining wall, uh, it's it's permeable in that there's the wall, but then you, you would fill it with like the crushed shells and that kind of thing. So so it does, um, it, it doesn't, water is absorbed into that, right? R right, right. It, wouldn't, okay. it wouldn't be asphalt or something like that. Yeah, that's Not hard. Okay. Enough, so. Thank you. Is there, are there any other comments before I move that we approve this? John, go ahead. Yeah, I do think we should condition that it not be, that, that be a, um, that it not be any kind of solid surface uh, over there. It has to be permeable. All right. That and, good. and I would think we would, might want to specify what it is uh, so that we don't run into problems down the road. Because there is a problem of erosion. I mean, and, 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 you know, one neighbor doing something that satisfies their needs, but creates flooding in another neighbor's yard. That's something we should be attuned to. Yes. Well, we're happy to agree uh, with, with what we submitted with the crushed shell. If, if, um, if that works for everybody, we can agree on that tonight. Yeah, I don't think there's, I don't have any issue with that. Can we say crushed shell or native grass? Because I mean, they may want right. to go back and forth. Between but but on top of sand, not on top. Yeah. Don't want, I mean, sometimes people put down things, and put the crushed shell over it. We, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a, a crushed shell over sand, native grasses. Is that consistent with what you had seen, Luke? Is, is that what you that's, were expecting? That's fine. Put in the walls, fill it with sand, crush gravel on the top after you tamp it. Yes, that that works. That works for us. Um, I think I don't know if it is really relevant, but I think that there's some gravel that has to be backfilled up against that wall as as it's as it's constructed. Um, there's some specifications that that I'd make sure the excavation contractor sure. follow. But right. Yeah, we aren't we aren't here to modify other commissions rules. So, but the the goal is to have something permeable, and if uh, you know sand, gravel, shell. Yeah, that's that's best for everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. I agree. Any other comments? All right, I move that we accept the uh, proposed uh, change to the. Uh, Statement of work for 190 Holbrook Avenue, map 14, parcel 159. Second, Michael. All right. Marty, how do you vote? Yes. Barbara? Yes. John? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. And Michael? Michael? Yes. Yes. And I'm, I'm, I'm searching for you. I just have to go through all the. And Leon, yes. So you're good to go. Who, who was the supervisor for the original NOI? Me. Are you going to continue then with this? Yep. Okay. Thank you, Hillary. You're welcome. Great. Okay. Um, I hope you can work this out with your neighbors so that that you yeah. uh, aren't lobbing rockets. <laughs> yep. We 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 like our neighbors very much, and we we uh, that's our our full intention. Just yeah. So, Ms. Jenkins, you know we we really want to uh, we really want to take good care of the neighborhood. Yes, hold on one moment, please, Mother. Oh, she was. Hold on. She she moved. She was hold a little on. upset. She's back. She's going hold back. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm here. Yes. Go ahead, Luke. I I just want to say we're we're uh, we're we're gonna make sure that we uh, you know sort everything out with you and and um everything will everything will be great in the long run so i don't, I don't want you to worry okay but, uh, i'll i'll take you what you're worried luke and sure. michelle <laughs> i hope so because i i know it's gonna i know whatever you do will look beautiful i just i'm just worried obviously for what will be you know what might be well, so i, I a question might be, what are you planning on putting on that 
surface that you're you're bending over to the left and then you're stopping the wall at the end of the garage like why is that area so important what will you be putting on there you won't be parking a car or anything correct no i i would like to have more usable space i don't know exactly what oh. what would be there but in the very least it will give us uh more ability to maintain the building and and um have access to that side of the property in general <laughs> Okay, I need to move this meeting along. Yeah. So I, I would urge you to keep up the dialogue so that uh, everything is satisfactorily resolved. I'm sure you will. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Luke. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Luke. Okay, so we'll need a form five for that. Which one of you has the grandfather clock that's always dinging? That's mine. <laughs> I think I'm back I heard it in for months now. <laughs> it keeps me on time. I like it. <laughs> okay. It keeps me on moving things along for us here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next one's a very sad one. Stern, 280 Circuit Road, Map 25, Parcel 9. They want to remove their dwelling because it's right on the edge of the cliff and to uh, restore the top of the cliff. Is there somebody here to represent that? Yes, there is. It's Bob here in Cape Cod Engineering. How are you tonight? Fine, thank you. How are you doing? Very well, thanks. I know it's a sad day for the Stern family, but the project before you uh, with uh, this notice of intent is a building demolition and removal. There is no immediate plan to put any kind of shelter or structure back on this site. That would be a separate item altogether. And so we've given you a notice of intent with a plan that shows kind of a before and after approach. Um, the owner is currently seeking uh, a eligible contractor to come in and do this work. If you've been there, you know that it's a, a kind of a scrub coastal plant community that surrounds this building. Uh, the building is in no immediate danger of falling off or collapsing over the cliff. It's a cinder block foundation and that's still set back about six or eight feet from the top of the slope, but you never know when you'll lose two or three feet at a time. So having this order of conditions in place is important um, rather than have an emergency develop. So if you come in circuit road, you can stage a good sized roll off uh, in the roadway. And what <clears throat> machines are typical for this type of thing is a really a hand effort initially. And then an excavator would grapple the stuff and put it in a roll off bin where it would be taken away. The uh, clearing of this debris would have to be complete and it will be complete. Once that is done, the area where the cellar hole is needs to be filled and compacted with sand. Um, and a, a minor amount of grading is needed in that area so that you, you put a bit of a gentle slope down to that lower driveway area. Now, there's very bituminous pavement here, so that's all coming out. Um, the restorative effort is a, an intense beach grass planting effort. And I think it's safe to say that over the course of time, other species will invade that beach grass and, and there will be other things growing there. So the slope of the land is beneficial. It slopes back from the top of the bank. So we're not likely to have any kind of a sort of a runoff stream flow. It, it, uh, it would effectively just drain back toward the, uh, the inner portion of the lot where that low driveway area is. And the, um, uh, the project is very straightforward. There's no construction uh, following this. We, we did file with the Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program because the road at the location where the driveway turns in is mapped as natural uh, or as a uh, priority habitat. We're not doing any work there except the access location is there. We felt it was safe to file with them. 
I asked them if it was needed and they never ever responded to my request to, for, for that information. So that application is outstanding. We have not heard from them. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure if, if you have the ability to close the meeting. But that's really the summary of it. I think it's possibly a, a, a day or two of, of work and then the restorative work would follow immediately, uh, weather permitting. And of course, the project would be done at such a time we believe that beach grass planting can follow immediately. Uh, so uh, that that's the um, that's the summary of this. I'd be happy to take your questions. The question I have right now is the uh, the basement is cement, right? Cement wall. It is. It's a it's a block wall. Yes. Are you gonna? And you said you're going to fill that. Is that right? Well, well that that's got to be removed entirely. Oh, okay. The remaining depression would then be sand filled. Okay, got it. Got it. Good. That's a good answer. Why Any other uh, comments? Excuse me. Yes. Might Might I ask some questions? Because my house is just above the Stearns house, so yeah. I am in a you, butter. Could you introduce yourself, please? So yeah. my name. For the sorry. My name is Sandy Berbeco, B-E-R-B-E-C-O, and my house is at 275 Circuit Road. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad to have you. Um, Th you're thank quite you. far back, as I, as I recall. I was uh, referring yes. to um, Google Earth, which is very useful these days. We actually do have a 2021 <laughs> photograph. What, what, we have been watching the Stearns house uh, for 25 years that since we've been there um, as the, um, the edge of the dune encroaches. And my questions have to do with um, the remediation of the roadway because you're going to be bringing heavy equipment in uh, to reach the Stearns house. And this is a rough dirt road. Are you going to be um, evening that out uh, for uh, for us, we there are there are two yeah. uh, houses on that street. Right. Good street. question. Yeah, great, great question. Thank you for that. I've been over there a lot. I know that the dirt road is um, a very informal dirt road. Um, <laughs> it, it slopes down. It, this project does not require um, massive equipment, but it does require what I would say would be typical sized excavation and lading equipment, which would be um, probably a 10 wheel size uh, dump truck. And that would likely require a little bit of pruning on that road, but not very much. I, I think that the pruning relates to how much branch uh, effect the driver wants to have on his uh, paint job. But the location where the work is occurring is, is wide open, a vehicle can, can back in here. They're very good at doing that, um, but, but they're tall. And uh, the, the machine that would be here would be a, a, an excavator that would be trailered in. It would then be taken off the trailer after it gets to this site, do its work, load the truck, and that would be several truckloads, and then leave. Everything would happen in a straight line. I don't believe there would be any damage to the road uh, because it's rubber tired vehicles. And last time I was in there, it wasn't that rutted. Um, I think if there was any um, scuffing of the surface, I don't think you'd notice it in another day. Well, but you, I, you usually, when, when heavy trucks come in, there is evidence that they've been there. Um, I, I agree, no question about it. One thing that's not happening, I do know, is that the track machine will not be tracking through there. Um, I know it would like to. We can make sure that it doesn't. It's hard to back a trailer in. Um, and I, I, I think that if, if your concern is for the road, um, we, we would need to take precautions that preserve the road. Although the, the residents that live on the road, of course, have the right to use it to the degree they need to use it, but I don't think the Stearns want to cause any long-term damage 
And I think yeah. that just need to make Barbara, that we, clear. Be, yeah. be, could we have um, before and after photos and condition this project um, such that if there is any damage to the road, then it be repaired or regraded in some way? Yeah, we're talking about Thank regrading all the time. Thank you. I don't, while, the, while I know that it's all greater than 100 feet from the top of the bank, I don't think there's any objection to, to that. I know the Stearns want to be good neighbors. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, in water comes down the road and then it usually floods the um, parking area, which is below grade. Is that so, at the, at, you're speaking about the Stearns property? Yes. 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 yes yep. And, and the, the um, drone image that I saw after this last storm was that their house was completely surrounded by um, uh, water? Just, no, just, just the, there was no access. It was, it was like a little island. Right, I understand what you're saying. Your, yeah. I think your, your property may, may be lucky in the sense that I don't think it, it gets a big hit from the road. That road um, diverts. I think if you look at the, the geometry of Circuit Road, the circumstances that either exist today or will exist, and I should say, and will exist when this job is completed, are beneficial to the coastal bank. And the reason for right. that is Circuit Road drains for about a third or two thirds of its length all the way down to where it might just pitch over the top of the coastal bank, but it can't it's diverted down to a low point at the Stearns drive under area and it right. percolates to the ground from there. It doesn't seem to create a, a massive pond unless you get a lot of rain and the scarification of this area by the work we're going to do will probably enhance its percolation ability, but I, I don't think you could have a better situation to protect the coastal bank than to have this diverted uh, drainage route that's going to result here. Um, okay. Yeah. So that that's a, that's a good thing. I don't see any way to, to fix it. No, no, no. I I'm just commenting that that you were filling in where the that area that you're pulling out and there and there. Actually, well, that's another good point. Thank you for bringing that up. We're actually filling in the cellar hole, which is a a very, a very distinct impression, or uh, I should say depression, and it would not be appropriate to leave that there. We're not filling in the low area. What we have is a six foot drop between the pavement, uh, where, where the pavement is being removed, up at the intersection of yes. Circuit Road to the area where um, that small parking area is. There's still going to be a six foot drop between those. Okay. Good. Okay. The that won't divert into your property. That's the main. Yeah. That's, that's the desire, right? You don't want it to flood your property. It's, no, yeah. it, it it could it couldn't the way it's situated now. The last but, thing um, is on the left of side of the road, halfway between my driveway and the Stearns' house, sort of now in the brambles, is a wooden fence. You may have not have noticed it, but it's I, it's. I don't it, think I did. It's my fence. That <laughs> it's sort of my my my. Um, oh, we we, we pointing can't, out we can't the, the, the edge of the edge of my property. Yeah, so let, let me, let me uh, help you with that one. Um, we have a, a very tight envelope here. I've spoken to Lauren McKean, uh, the seashore land manager, as you know, probably know Lauren. And we're in a butter uh, to them on our west. Uh, there's a note on the plan that makes very clear that a very uh, distinct uh, understanding of the lot line that comes from a utility pole down uh, the edge of the driveway, we're not gonna harm a twig on the seashore land. And with the roadway such as it is, I don't see that your fence will be affected at all. Okay, are, are you gonna take the utility pole down? I haven't, I haven't thought of it. I haven't proposed it. It's probably of no use, but I wouldn't pretend to say that removing that at this time, since it's a good, you know, 80 feet away, it might be providing some stability for the pole that's nearest to you. 
Okay. <laughs> I, ju just an oh, by the way, question. That was. Yeah, that's a good that, question. Yeah, that poll probably belongs to the power company anyway. So they would have to take it out, I would suspect. You think so? Threatened. And, and actually, it, 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 if you're taking that out, you'd have to kind of strip the wires back to your poll. And then you'd need a guy. I think you need a guy for the poll that's at the end, although there is no guy for this. That's a great question. It's not something I considered. Sorry, I don't have a good answer for you. Okay, well, I'm just sort of wondering what happens to the wires, all the, the electrical, you know, all, all the wires and stuff. Well, but well, you can, you can get back to me on the side. Okay, yeah, that's a great question. Um, it's it, We have to do a utility disconnect to the house. Yes. And oh, yeah. that's, you know, that's, uh, I, I, I know there's no transformer on our property. No. And that that is an excellent question, but I, I don't see that we have anything more than a secondary to remove. Okay. If you have power going to the house right now, you there's a dangerous uh, power line that's, I think it's a power line that's sagging down into the yard right now. It's easily, you have to duck under. Yes, so, probably cable or telephone. Um, uh, but, could be, yeah, it could be. That's all coming, that's all coming off. Uh, okay. there, there'll be no wires to, that are going to be left. No, no way okay. on that. That that's the, the secondary is being discontinued. Thank you. Well, thank you John? all. Uh -huh. Thank you, John. Yeah, I uh, propose. Have we already proposed to accept? No, the, you may propose. I may uh, motion that we accept the demolition of this property. I yeah. second that motion. Before you vote, I have a question for Mr. Perry. Go ahead, Michael, sorry. Yeah, uh, so on the uh, actual project narrative, you're talking about the affected areas will be planted with American beach grass and overseeded with other grasses. But on the site plan, there's a much more specific set of uh, grasses. Are you gonna follow that, that very simple one or are you gonna do what's on the site plan? Because they're, they're not um, the my, same. My my preference is the site plan. That's the plan of record and the narrative discussed uh, in general. But um, we, we believe the beach grass is going to be invaded with a lot of different things, and we might as well invade it with seeds. Now, now that we're bringing that into it, ryegrass will be a good thing in an intermediate sense. Um, the switchgrass are a warm season germination, and in in a sense to stabilize this in the best way, you just want to get as much willing grass as you can. Mm -hmm. And uh, if look, for example, in a, in a year's time, that beach grass is going to do quite well. But in that interim, the rye and anything else that will come in with those seeds um, is a benefit. And, and the plan would be the, the, uh, the guideline. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, a movement, a motion has been made and seconded. Artie, how do you vote? Yes. I vote yes. John, how do you vote? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Uh, Michael? Yes. Is that everybody? Barbara. Barbara, Barbara yes. Sorry, right, Barbara. That's okay. <laughs> you're, you're in anonymous mode now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's approved. Uh, we know. need to. Supervisor, we need a supervisor. I'll do it. I haven't done one yet. Great. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Well, thank that that was a vote, and thank you very much. And uh, happy holidays to you. And may the butter have a, a long term uh, uh, <laughs> happiness in the neighborhood. Um, we're, we're coming to 60 plus years. Thank you very much. I, I will be long gone. From <laughs> that land. Oh, please, please <laughs> it's a race between you, you yeah, and the uh, up tide. Okay, let's Thank move you. on to the, to the next one. Uh, we're talking about Baker, 113 Ion Road, map 28, parcel 72, septic upgrade. This was continued from the last meeting of 1 December. So somebody speak to that? Yes. <clears throat> Matt Farrell. Hello, Matt. Uh, I uh, represent Thomas and Laura, uh, Thomas and Laura Baker. Mm -hmm. So at the last meeting, um, you folks asked me to inquire with the owners as whether they'd be interested in 
in adding innovative alternative treatment to the system. And after several phone calls and um, Laura and Thomas getting together, they've decided that they, they cannot do it at this time. So I'll just remind the commission that this is an upgrade to failed cesspools that are in the groundwater. So we're getting a Title V system designed here that meets Title V code. We've been to the Board of Health and um, we would appreciate the commission to act on, uh, respectfully act on this proposal in front of you. Okay, well, we're bound by the rules, Rex, so. Well, thank uh, you for, for asking anyway. Yes, yes. <laughs> Good effort. <laughs> John? Uh, I just would like to quote um, Aldo Leopold here. Um, Ethical behavior is doing what is right, even when doing what is wrong is legal. This seems to me a classic example of unethical behavior. Okay. <clears throat> Any other discussions? Okay. I would move the application. You move to approve the application? Yes. Okay. I'll second. second. All right. Marty? Yes. Both? Leon, yes. Barbara? Reluctantly, yes. And John? No. Benjamin? Yes. And? Michael, Ruben. yes. Michael, sorry. It's very disorganized on my desktop right now. Okay, and Michael. That's, yes, okay. All right. May I ask, may I ask you negative two or three? Hmm. Uh, I don't have the site plan in front of me, so I don't know. I have the site plan. I'm just looking to see if the whole thing's in the flood zone. Yes. Flood zone. That, two. Thank you. Okay, and that's a form two. Okay. That was a good quote, John. I like that. Thank you very much. You guys have great holidays. You too. Um, you too. Be safe. Leon, it comes from Sand County Almanac. Ah, that's great. Um, like that. Leopold was one of the founders of modern ecology. Hmm. I wonder what you feel now. Okay. We're getting down there. Daddy Bat, Realty Trust, Alonzo, 90 Ring Road, Map 41, parcels 96 and 97.1, NOI to construct an extension to the bedroom continued from the 1st of December, where we heard it first. Is there someone to represent that? Good afternoon, Dave LaJoy here. Oh, hi, Dave. Good afternoon. Okay, so where were we? Let, let's make sure we're all on the same page. What we left with was, uh, well, I know you sent a letter. David, that you recalculated? Yes. Why don't, you, why don't you go through that with us, please? Um, basically, it's clarification on what is the historically disturbed area. Mm -hmm. but what, what I had with when I make the calculation using basically the hardscape, I come up with 2,700 square feet. However, when I reread the regulations for an expansion to an existing dwelling, mm -hmm. you're allowed 5,000 square feet in your bylaw. So I think we comply with that. Regardless, the proposal is to add an addition on the northwest side of the house on pilings. There was a request to remove decking as similar to the square footage amount of the addition. But when you look at the building, the existing decking basically fits the house. It's not obtrusive. It's not doing any damage to the bank. And the final thing is when I spoke with the owner, you had some issues about prior tree cutting. I don't have any answers about that. But what she did say was she wanted to install a new septic system with the advanced treatment um, as further mitigation for allowing the addition. 
which is substantial. Be happy to answer any questions. Leon, may I ask a question? Certainly, Michael. So since early November, we've been asking about this uh, unauthorized tree cutting. And you're just saying that they don't have an answer, so we're supposed to ignore it. Is that what you're saying? Of course not. So what are you saying? You haven't mentioned anything about mitigation. There was no application for trimming, let alone cutting off the tops of trees. What do you expect us to do about that? What I'd like you to do would be to um, not consider that as part of this application, unless you want to add that as an order of conditions that this be resolved prior to obtaining a certificate of of occupancy or compliance for the proposed addition. How do you propose that it be resolved? I suspect she's gonna finally be able to find out and confer with who did it, why they did it, and to your satisfaction, have some kind of remediation to it, either allowing it, finding her, um, having it revegetated for a certain thing there, whatever, but I don't have an answer for it. She didn't have an answer. Well, if we put it off, then it's gonna be an after action. Uh, well, it's or, already an after action in the sense yeah, it's been true. cut for some time. Yeah, long enough for the trees to die. The other question I have, in your recalculation of the area, you said you're not counting the beach grass area, the lawn, as part of the disturbed area? The Cape Cod lawn area, right. However, in your initial application, you said that the total, uh, the project will be all on disturbed areas so that the application says we can build there because it's disturbed. And now you're saying it's not disturbed, so we shouldn't count it. Um, that's correct. That's correct. and. What I mentioned in the letter, when I typically go to a site to try to determine historical disturbance, we go there, we take measurements around what appears to be disturbed. And we're talking about disturbed within a relatively recent period of time. It may be a different owner, it may be um, whatever the scenario is, and we try to be conservative so that we're giving you some type of assessment to it. If on a similar project that you approved, you basically were concerned about hardscape, walkways, parking areas, et cetera, et cetera, nothing like a, um, a turfed lawn. So it's difficult to have um, a proper evaluation and submittal to you for what is historically disturbed. What I always do is if there is, I'm over the, some number over 5,000 or 3,000, whatever the number may be, I ask for a waiver. And that allows you to decide if the disturbance is significant historically or not. So that's why I made the different calculations. And the driveway you're saying now is not disturbed? The driveway has been disturbed. It's part of a road. It's not hardscape in that sense of what is um, applicable to the project. If you want to include the driveway portion that's on the lot, which is what I did originally, then I'll, we can do that. And I'll again ask for a variance for that historic use. And it's very difficult to define what's historic and not once you go to some of these sites. And the definition of what's historically disturbed, I couldn't find one. I don't know if you can define it yourselves. The bylaw gives an explanation and that's what we go by. Is 
Well, I have to say, you're asking for variances. You're asking us to overlook or at least put off consideration of a violation. Uh, and to approve this project, I have real reservations about the whole thing. I'm not asking to do that. I'm proposing it as an alternative solution to it. If you want to say the hearing can't go on until this has been resolved, it's been on other projects. I've been involved in many where historically people had pruned or topped off trees and they were always addressed. It had little to do with what the proposed project was at the time. It was something that was generally handled either through a, a order condition to the, proving the project or some other means, finding them, however you want to do it. I can't get any answer from the owner um, significant enough to tell you. And we're not talking about a heck of a lot of trees. It doesn't appear to be um, a lot of them, which is relative to. I go back to as well, what impact is it to the Coastal Bank, the addition? I gave information and on the notice of how it complies with the parts of the statute. Looking for the 50 foot line right now. The 50 foot line. FDFS, right? Coastal Strip. It's to the east, northeast of the house. Yeah. There's also 50 feet from the top of the coastal bank on the east side of the road. This is a peninsula. Yeah. All the works within the, the 50 feet. Barbara? Yes, we, we just keep kicking this one to the next meeting and the next meeting and the next meeting. As I said last time, I'm not on board with this project at all. Uh, I just want to be on record for saying that. Yeah. Can you give me your the reasons? Um, yes, because the works in the 50 foot buffer zone, I think there've been problems with the tree cutting. Um, I, it's on a sensitive area um, and it's a very sensitive area. And that's my main reason not to have anything there. How is the proposal impacting that resource area? Because there's going to be structure on it, Dave. That's, that's my rationale. And there's no structure on it now. Except the existing building. Well, that's already there. We're not telling them to take their house down. We're just telling them they can't put an addition on it. That's what I'm saying. Yep. Do you want to force a vote? You're calling for a vote, David? I'll ask for some more comments so I know what to do. Well, I think we've given you a lot of comments all the way through. You did move, the, you made one major adjustment to where it's located, but it's still within the 50. And I keep coming back to the fact that this tree cutting has happened. Um, and there's the recalculation, which seems to be, I mean, you're reading the regulations differently from where you read before. I, again, I agree with Barbara. I real, have real problems with this, with this project as a whole. Her, her uh, request to add a new septic system with alternative treatment doesn't carry any weight. Well, certainly it's a good thing. It should be anyway. This is a it's big not required. So. The 50 foot. This isn't, it's not required. So it's a significant um, condition for her to agree to. You would think. John? Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of, of skepticism about this project, particularly um, I wanted some deck removed. Um, on the other hand, uh, adding the alternative innovative septic system, uh, it does weigh for me. 
I'm not sure if I'm ready to go there yet, but that is an important factor for me uh, as a mitigating factor uh, for the, the, um, the disturbance. Um, so is that, I, is that mentioned in your last letter of December 8th? Anything about the alternative system or is that post your letter December 8th? It's not in the letter. No, it's post. I would recommend, and I'm not saying, you know, Mr. Felco has, has the alternative. I would recommend that he go back to his uh, uh, employer and suggest that um, that they come up with something to do to deal with the tree cutting rather than we don't know how it happened um, and think about what they can do in terms of reducing some of the deck area along with the alternative system. Um, I, for one, um, would be willing to move forward if I had that, that came back to us positively. Um, otherwise, we just, talking over and over again about the same thing. So my suggestion is that, that we put this off until we have some more um, uh, positive suggestions from the, uh, from the homeowner. Although the uh, um, alternative innovative system is a, is, is, moves me a lot further along towards saying yes. Do I, does should they still need to, Remove part of the deck. I would like to see part of the deck removed as well. So you would like everything then? Removal of the deck, alternative treatment unit, and so forth. Everything that could help the environment, yes. Yes. This is a large structure. It's a lot of displacement on top of, right on top of a bank. So. I don't think uh, I'll ask for continuance, please. Thank you. I move that we continue this until the 19th, or what would be the uh, uh, January 5th. Um, can I just say, Hillary? Yes. I mean, this is probably, I shouldn't say this, but um, I'm, if, 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 Mr. LaJoy comes back with some positive uh, uh, movement on the issues I raised. I, because of the alternative system, the innovative alternative system, I'm inclined to move forward with this, but I'm gonna be gone in January. So he may <laughs> make his best interest to wait until February to bring this up. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to him. Okay, I, I suggest that we uh, continue this indefinitely then, and let and we'll listen to it whenever there's something to listen to. Second. So that's, that's my motion. That I'll we, second. All right, Marty. Yes. Marty, you haven't said anything about this. What's your feeling? Well, I, 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 I agree with John with regard to the offer of the INA system. And I think that's a major mm -hmm. move and it's, it's not inexpensive. Okay. No. And, and, but I also agree with regard to the trees that they should be addressed and we ought to know what can be done there. Okay. Whether well, there's some kind of mitigation. I'm not so crazy about the removal of deck. I, I'll be honest with you. It, yeah. It's existing. I think it ought to stay there. Uh, and, but I'd be in favor of it uh, if those two items were taken care of. Okay, great. Thank you. Barbara, how do you vote? For the continuance? For yeah. the continuance? Yeah. Yes. yes. Continue. John? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Michael? Yes. And Leon? Yes. So that's indefinitely done only because we, it's a strategic decision as to when to come back with, depending on what the, uh, depending on what the uh, offer is. That, there's no form for that, right? There's no, no form. form for no it. Form. Okay. Okay. And Mr. LaJoy, we get to we get to uh, make a decision on your uh, landscaping. You were you're gonna. I think we worked out all the details, right? 
Right. Right. We couldn't we couldn't vote because the address was posted incorrectly. Right. So let's right. just review what the uh, what we ended up with last time. Uh, Mr. LaJoy, as I recall, we were going to you're going to plant some trees, a combination yes, of trees and uh, and uh, shrubs. Is that right? Yes, we had we had the six trees on the revised site planning you have. Okay, great. Uh, does anybody feel that we need to discuss this anymore? I think we had a very good discussion last time. I move that we approve this uh, for oops, have here. the Joy 60 Sarit Lane, map 42, parcel 87.3. I as far as the, uh, I guess every, the orders of condition that we had or what we worked out last time have all been incorporated into the new. Uh, I'll, I'll second, I think this is a good example of how getting a new corridor can be worked properly so it doesn't yeah. hurt the environment. Right, okay. So we had a mo motion and a second, right? Yes. Okay, okay. good. Marty, how do you vote? Yes. Barbara? Yes. John? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. And Michael? Yes. And I say yes as well, Leon. Need a supervisor for this one too. Okay. I'll be the supervisor. Good night. Even though I've never been trained. Thank you. I can, I can supervise. Did somebody appear for the Thompson Romano matter yet? Oh yes. That's a good point. Is, is anyone here? Let me get my oh yes. Thompson Romano. Is anyone here to represent that? I take that as a no. I I will uh, propose that we um, uh, move that and uh, continue it indefinitely. Yes, I believe that's true. There's been a, there's a lot of issues with this. Okay, uh, I second that. Um, Marty, I just make make yeah, that, John. Um, it's someone should reach out to the to the owners that we are very reluctant to move beyond a one year extension yeah. unless they're really good. I mean, they just may not know. Yeah, and I'm not really sure about a one year extension given the history of this. I'm, I'm not even sure why they want an extension. So they yeah. need to explain that. Yep, they got some explaining to do. So do we want, you want to continue them indefinitely? Yeah, since there's, we can't set a date with anybody. I'm just looking to see if we have their phone number, which I don't believe we do. Mm -hmm. Okay, no worries. Okay, we need to vote on that then, right? Yes. So, Marty, this yes. is indefinite. Okay, I vote yes. Barbara? Yes. John? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. And Michael? Yes. Okay. Oh, wait a minute, I have a question. <laughs> Who are you gonna ask? Right, Look, this is a continuance. We just, we just voted for a continuance, right? Yes, just a continuance. All right, so no form, just continue. No, yeah. no, right. No right. form. Okay, that, we're fine. Go ahead. So far, we have one, two, we have two fives and a two. We have no, no, that's not right. Three, three fives. fives. Three, three fives, fives and a two. two. And that's it. Mr. LaJoy. Okay. I think Mickey's big big hand has passed the, the 12th it's, and we've taken care of the business. I move that we adjourn the meeting unless there's somebody something to say. I just wonder if any of these three folks who I don't recognize have anything to address with the commission or- Oh, there, yes, there is a listening. hand up. No, that's not a hand Does anybody that's listening have anything to say? No. Take that as a no. Okay. All right. Thank you for that, uh, Hillary. <laughs> okay. I, I move. I move. We adjourn. I second. Marty, how do you vote? Yes. yes. I vote yes. Barbara. Yes. John. Yes. Benjamin. Yes. And Michael. 
Yes. Okay, it's unanimous. We're out of here. All right. Good meeting, everybody. Uh, yeah. yeah. Quick, we're done. Well, it's not even six thirty. All right. <laughs> That's twice in a row now. All right, Happy I do holidays. have a, what this morning for the site visit. What did you guys do? I got there and at, it's like one minute to 10 and no one was there. I think I, you're running a little slow there, guy. No, I looked at my cell phone. <laughs> no, I yeah, saw. You're on well, see, you're on I wealthy see, time. We're on. We're on. Three. I saw John at town hall. Were you hiding inside or something? No, they were gone. <laughs> oh, they were gone. Oh, yeah, they left early. Oh. Yeah, you got to run the railroad, you know. Okay. I don't yeah, watch. but you know. <laughs> Sorry, John. Way, we we missed not, you. It's not true that Mussolini got the trains on time. <laughs> I don't want to uh, equate myself with Mussolini. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.